Welcome and good morning, everyone, to another Sunday morning, early morning show. Wow. Hey, something today. If I seem just a little off my game, I woke up with, you know, one of those headaches, you know, just like your head's going to explode. So if my head does explode on this video, share it because I'm sure a lot of people would love to see that. You talk about getting some hits. God, the guy's head blew up. Awesome. There was a movie called Scanners way back when that that woke something happened and their heads blew up. I, I don't know. It was kind of gory. Beth, B-Side Records, you, you could tell me if that's the movie Scanners. It would be something you would like. So, uh, it's just, I didn't even shave today. Probably looks like I have a hangover. Oh my God. But it's Sunday morning and I'm not going to, I like being consistent in life. I just, that's what I do. So, uh, <laughs> the show must go on. Alrighty. So, let's talk about finals. I got a lot of stuff here to show. Uh, first off, last week, showed the Zeppelin bootleg. I said that Randolph, that, that Randy Weaver didn't like Zeppelin. I was wrong. It wasn't Randy Weaver. It was another guy that begins with the letter R. I'm going to let you go free, Rob. I'm not going to talk about you. So, Randy Weaver does like Zeppelin. So if anybody unsubbed him, because I said he didn't like Zeppelin, sub him back. And if you just haven't subbed him, just sub Randy anyway. Dang it. Guy's great. You need to watch his channel. Randy, Randolph, Randy Weaver. Randolph Weaver. All right, let's get into things. This was a uh, Vinyl Me uh, Please. It's uh, the one subscription that some months I do, some months I don't. Depends if they kind of tick me off. They sent me Loretta Lynn's Coal Miner's Daughter, and I really don't remember that one coming in. I haven't even shown it. I mean, I don't mind Loretta Lynn, but I don't want to pay 30 bucks for Coal Miner's Daughter, 20 or whatever it is. This one, though, kept me in. Experience Unlimited. Uh, it's a group out of D.C. And they formed kind of in the early 70s in the um, D.C. ghettos, shall we say, or in the projects. And, and these guys... They were attracted to groups like Santana, Jimi Hendrix, Led Zeppelin. Those were their inspirations. Thus, Experience Unlimited. They took the experience from uh, Jimi Hendrix Experience, uh, and it's where they started. Well, as the 70s moved on, they began to add more horn and more percussion to what they were doing. I believe this is the first album in 1979, and these guys kept going into the 90s. And in 1988, they had a hit called um, Da Butt. Da Butt. I don't know it. Maybe I do know it, but it doesn't ring ahead in my mind. But it was a huge hit. Uh, but they, so they were part of what's called the Go-Go Movement, at least back in the 70s. And the Go-Go Movement was really huge in D.C. It was a D.C.-based musical, should we say, expression. And it combined um, funk with R&B, and then it added old-school rap to it. And they called it the Go-Go Movement. This comes with... A very nice book uh, explains about and it's upside down so how about that for those of you that watch videos upside down it probably look right side up uh, so it, got, it goes into more about the actual record label that this thing came that uh, produced this group. It was called Blackfire Music. So it talks a lot about the beginning of Blackfire Music. Uh, and it was a record label. And the guy was really upset who started it. You know, like Herb Elpert, he said, stole jazz from the African Americans and made his own label and suddenly made it white. Well, he wanted to have... A really strong African American label, so he called him, came up with Black Fire. Uh, Black, you know, it's said to have ties with Black Panther stuff like that. Nice final. I'm going to pay, pay. I'm going to play a snippet of it so you can hear because this is funky. 
God, I love them horns. I mean, they, they do some a little some mellower stuff on this also, but there is just a lot of funk and soul going on, which, gosh darn, I like that stuff. So enjoy that and see what you think about it. Next up, Sor, Soraya, Soraya, Sor, Soraya, Soraya, oh, someone in the comments, tell me how to pronounce it, because I can I appreciate last week, uh, someone said, it's not Max Richter, it's Max Richter, he's German, ah, see, I do everything phonetically. And my phonetically is just totally messed up whatsoever. But um, hey, <laughs> I got a master's degree, but I sure didn't get to learn to do it by pronouncing crap right. <laughs> uh, so, so, sorry, uh, I screw it. All right, this is a band out of Philadelphia. Uh, it formed in, oh, gosh darn it, in uh, 2012 or something like that. I, 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 I believe it has a real punk edge to it. Uh, really neat music on here. Uh, the lead singer, Zuzu, uh, Zao Zao, Zuzu Masao. <laughs> she really, really belts out tunes. Uh, there it is, uh, two gals, two guys on there. I'm trying to think why I bought this. I, I think I read a review in a magazine about it, about this thing being really, really good. And so I bought it, and guess what? I went on, I listened to some snippets, and it was really, really good. So I was going through an Amazon wish list. Price had kind of dropped on this thing, so I did buy it. They had, in 2016, this album's from 2018. In 2016, they had a number one hit in Central America and South America. Dang exciting. They did a, um, a Kinks cover. I'm, oh, I'm like, I, I, I can't remember. It was a Kinks cover. Uh, but it, it was really big in Central and South America. Uh, it's always good to be popular someplace. Got to start somewhere, right? Uh, fun group. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's very, very more punky on there which I truly enjoy. Uh, the name Soraya, Soraya, maybe Richard Riley, you, you, you know how to pronounce it. It's Arabic for um, Bright Shining Star. So what's called? Bright, the group Bright Shining Star has a very, very good album. And for those that speak Arabic, you can do the rest. I do not speak Arabic. <laughs> I struggle with English, what the hey. Uh, Blue Note Repress. Ah, no, no, can't say Blue Note Repress. It's a prestige repress here. Again, they're coming out with these. Uh, Amazon, you can find them really inexpensive. Uh, this was one of them, and it's Walking by, uh, Working, Working by the Miles Davis Quintet. This was the first really great quintet. And this one uh, contained uh, John Coltrane, Red Garland, Paul Chambers and Philly Joe Jones. Uh, you know, they, they were nicknamed the Band of Boxers because a lot of them did boxing. It was a way to stay in shape as a way that they also felt to help even with their breathing and things like that. But it was also called the Band of 
drunks and junkies. These guys had issues, shall we say, uh, and they became really unreliable. I mean, Red Garland, he was late all the time, uh, strung out or junk, uh, drunk. Paul Chambers was a drunk, and there was times where he would uh, just come in just totally drunk to the sessions or to, uh, to where they were playing. Uh, Philly Joe Joe Philly Joe Jones and uh, John Coltrane were heavy into heroin at that time. Uh, reports of of um, John Coltrane just uh, totally going out. Uh, he'd be up there and he would just zone out and uh, not not even be part of it uh, due to his heroin problem. The straight guy was Miles Davis. He had just gotten off heroin and then got this thing going, and he's trying to run, <laughs> keep these other four guys under control, which is really, really tough. Uh, he began, though, um, getting into cocaine, uh, and that became his drug of choice, but he had started, he had stayed off heroin and did not go back, which is really, really good. So what's interesting is he wanted, Davis wanted to get onto Columbia. Columbia was the label, especially for jazz, but he was into prestige. So he worked a deal with prestige that he would record a whole bunch of albums really quick. So within three sessions, three sessions, he recorded five albums, and this was one of them. You know, he did, uh, I think one was just called Miles Davis. It was working, steaming, relaxing. They put them together. They went in there and they just played. Many of the songs on those five albums are first takes. Because it was boom, 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 you know, 31 hours uh, just knocking it out because he wanted to get over to Columbia as fast as he can. And as they produced these, as these albums went out, he was still on, he was already making albums for Columbia, which would then be produced when the prestige contract ran out. So, you know, really good early mile stuff. This is a lot of ballads. He does ballads and blues and some bebop standards. It's He, uh, he uses more of his muted trumpet. You know, he didn't use a lot of notes, and he would get mad at Coltrane because Coltrane would come in and, you know, you know he's just blowing out notes, and David's going, man, knock it off. Too many notes. Uh, so Coltrane kind of balanced off Davis's less notes, which makes it really interesting. And, you know, Philly Joe Jones, man, that guy could drum. Boy, of course, Red Garland. So a great quintet, really nice pickup. So I went to my uh, local store, Radio Wasteland, Jim, shout out for you, uh, and he had this, the Jazz Butcher Conspiracy. No idea what it was, but he liked it. And, well, my record guy likes it, then I like it, gosh darn it. These guys were formed in 1982 out of Oxford. That's in the UK. And uh, it's... It's said that uh, they this group transformed more often than most groups do in a lifetime. They were always changing around, all kinds of different people coming in, out. Uh, you know, they went from 1982 to, I believe, 2000. And the leader of it was a guy named Pat Fish, or they call it Butch. Uh, it's, it has, there's like some, what should I say, there's uh, some folk, some funk, some country western, some pop. It's kind of all over the place. The lyrics aren't bad. Uh, it's, you know, he, he does some nice lyrics. Uh, you know, some of them are introspective, some of them are kind of funny. It was okay. I, I, I can't say I'm, I'm a huge fan of them. I, I don't hate them or anything, but it's not like I would jump up and down if I saw another one of their albums. I liked it. I wasn't blown away by it, um, but I'm going to play a snippet of it so you can also hear. I also have, hold on, hold on, got a download card. Look at that. They put this thing on a postcard. Isn't that kind of neat? So if you're interested in the download, whoever comments first, I'm going to give you that download. And, you know, I have stacks of download cards, and I just haven't used them yet. So... I'm going to show these. I don't know if they're still good or not. Uh, if you're interested, let me know. This is for um, Welcome to Zamrock. So it's an African. Welcome to Zamrock. Let me know. I have Will 
you have Tyler going west that was his latest one if you're interested and Bob mold sunshine rock again if you're interested in that one you let me know okay and I will get those to you as soon as I can In the background, we hear Dick Drake, and this is Brighter Later, this is the second album that he put out. I'm unable to play samples because it's blocked, kind of like Miles Davis. Don't bother trying to play a sample of Miles Davis, it ain't gonna happen, folks. Um, I did this, I showed this one on a contest, I recently picked this one up at a little store in Ohio. Now, I was debating, you know, they wanted more than I wanted to spend. She cut me a great deal. It's a second pressing. This was from 1976 that this one came out. You know, and it's on. How does that pronounce? Oh, I'm not even going to bother. Uh, God darn it. Nick, Nick, Nick Drake, you know, such a beautiful voice. This is his happy album. Uh, he had additional members of the Fairport Convention come in and help. And also, uh, John Cale uh, came in and, and was part of this. And a lot of the orchestration came from John Cale. You know, Nick Drace's voice, his voice is still, it's, you know, it's sad, but it's soulful. You know, his, his, his lyrics a lot of times deals with lost love, um, you know, not always upbeat, but the music that's behind him. This is one of his most orchestrated works, as you can hear. Uh, it really puts it forward. It's just such a great album. You know, a year or so ago, I found this great book here on Nick Drake. And it's just, you know, it's a fascinating book. I mean, this this guy's a, tra it's, it's such a tragedy. When he was alive, nobody cared about his music. Zero. He couldn't sell anything. Part of it's his fault. He was so painfully shy when he would record, he would put his back to the wall so no one was looking at him or he couldn't feel. I mean, he didn't even want to record with anybody in the room. He was so shy. And so to go out on a stage and play was just horrific for him. And then the fact that nobody bought his music, I mean, it just crushed the man. I mean, he wound up, you know, committing suicide. It was just, it's such a tragic story. But after he died, people found his music and began listening and were just, wow, such a voice. But such a sad, sad person. Uh, super album. I, I got a CD box set. I got an uh, album box set. Uh, this is uh, my first, though, just regular album, man. I didn't need it, but it was just the chance to have that. All right, two albums that I haven't known, and I'm one of the only people in the world that probably have it. The uh, two Fleetwood Mac, okay, two of these Fleetwood Mac ones. Uh, this one has a first pressing uh, club issue, I guess, on there. So this is the first one, Fleetwood Mac. This is an original master uh, recording. So I found this on Record Store Day, a really good price. I thought, hey, I'll just pick that up. I don't own it. Don't even own it on CD, but it had some great stuff. It's when Buckingham Nicks finally came on board. Now, this was more of a total group collaboration. Buckingham only had three songs on here. He hadn't taken over the group. Christy McVie really is the one that leads on here. It had a lot of her best stuff. You know, um, it, it had Over My Head, uh, and it also had um, Say Say You Love Me. Plus, she had some other great stuff. And Nix, of course, had Rihanna on here and uh, Landslide, which I love the Dixie Chicks version of that. So 
I just, you know, original master. I didn't own it. I thought, why not? We'll just purchase that sucker, and I really enjoyed it. So then Tusk. Uh, you know, when I when I was in college, this came out, and it was two records set. And I go, how the hell can I buy that? I, I really like that song. I actually like the song Tusk with the orchestra. But I heard some other stuff. and go, God, that's kind of crappy. Uh, you know, this album was about when, um, what's this, uh, Lindsey Buckingham took over. And he really began to run this group. Um, here's what it looks like there on the label. And so, to me, there's a lot of experimentation in here. And just some crap and filler, in my own personal opinion. Are there great songs? Of course there are on here. Sarah's on here, The Ledge, Over and Over, um, Tusk, obviously. But then there's just some stuff that, to me, is just Buckingham kind of going out. Let's do this. I mean, this was... Oh, what could you call this one? It's a sound of a band imploding. That's it. If you want to listen to what something sounds like when a band implodes, take a listen to this sucker. It's really what was happening within Fleetwood Mac, and things weren't going well. Uh, some good stuff. I'm glad I own it. You know what? It kind of took care of a lot of the Fleetwood Mac from the 70s now, but now my favorite Fleetwood Mac. Next one, though. Malo. Malo, Spanish for bad. This is Dos. This is Malo's second album. And it is on Warner Brothers. All right. This is a San Francisco group. Started in the 72. I am, I am holding it completely wrong. There, let's just take that off. Pretty neat artwork there, isn't that? Uh, so this San Francisco band formed in 82. Arcelio Garcia and Jorge Santana. Yes, Carlos's brother was one of the forms, uh, founders of this group. Uh, two groups got together. Malibus was one and Naked Lunch was the other one. Their very first album, probably Milo Uno, did really, really well. But then things kind of blew up and a bunch of people left. So they came out with those. This is Latin rock. To me, it's Latin rock at some of its finest. Think Blood, Sweat, Tears. Think Chicago in there. Very, very popular in Central and South America. So not only was Soria, the Arabic one, you know, bright, whatever, popular there. This one was two. Two albums this week, popular in Central and South America. Dang, I give you some great stuff, huh? Love, love, love this album. I want to play you a snippet of it, but it was just my kind of stuff. Lots of conga in there, lots of horn. This thing rocks and makes you feel good. Just makes you want to get up and shake your booty. So enjoy. was the album that sold with the number one um, album uh, debut album in Ireland you ask it was Hot House Flowers not you two not anybody else Hot House Flowers when they put this out it took the prize for the number one album ever debuted in Ireland went to number one went to number two in the UK uh, so this, these guys actually went um, 1985 to present. They're, they're still playing out there. Uh, it's a group of street, these were uh, street performers, or what they called in Ireland, buskers. Uh, one of them, two of the guys were in the incomprehensible Benazi brothers. And the other one, uh, his name was Alex O'Toole, I believe. He won street performer of the year. 
is that there's such a thing as that in Ireland? Street Performer of the Year. And the winner goes to the Street Performer of the Year. <laughs> you know, if you're out on the street, do you even have a place to put your trophy at? I don't know. But that was interesting. So this thing came out, and obviously it had some hits on here. Uh, great album. I had it in cassette for many, 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 many years. Found this for a buck. How could you go wrong? You find that for a buck. That first Hot House Flowers called People is really good. And had the hit Don't Go and I'm Sorry. And I believe I'm going to play a snippet of I'm Sorry on this thing. So, great find. One buck. Can't go wrong. Mm -hmm. Alrighty, then we have the We Five Make Someone Happy. All right, I just saw this and I go, God, that thing looks lame. I don't know anything about them, but these guys did have a hit. Just another group I didn't know about. This is their second album. Their first, the hit on the first one was um, You Were On My Mind. And I guess that did very, very well. In fact, they were up for a Grammy. Uh, with the Beatles for best vocal group, but the group that won was uh, Anita Care Anita Care Quintet won the Grammy for best vocal groups. How many of you have an album? Please in comments. But I have the Anita Care Quintet album. Uh, so these guys came out. This was they broke up after this. Bib Bibbins decided, hey, I'm going to go do my own thing or whatever. Uh, so they go, there's nothing psychedelic or arcane about We Five's music. What you hear on this album is honest, imaginative, straight, straightforward, and fun. It is unfortunate that fun in this age has become equated with frivo frivolity and dismissed as trivia. But still, this is a wee fun, and this is a fun album, and damn fine music. I did not find it to be damn fine music. Uh, you know, it was cheap. Give it a try. See what went on. Eh, you know, whatever. Uh, but this was the first folk group ever to do a Coca-Cola commercial. That's some trivia you can bank on. Use that on Trivia Night. Final one. Talk about some fun-looking guys. Here we go. Uh, that's the Kershaw Brothers. That is, we got Rusty and Doug Kershaw. Uh, music that they did back in the 50s. Uh, so Doug Kershaw, born in 36, his brother Rusty in 38. Rusty died uh, in 2001, I believe, uh, heart on there. So these guys, um, it's a lot of rockabilly on here. You know, they do country, some bluegrass, uh, and some rockabilly. Again, super cheap. I saw it out there. Thought, look at them faces. How could you not buy them? Okay. I mean, that's probably not the best looking pictures. <laughs> they look at us a little like, oh my God. But it was fun music. In 1959, though, they both um, went into the army and that kind of broke up the group. After the army, they got together, but then Rusty got out of the show business and Doug Kershaw obviously has had a great career. Uh, you know, he went into more of the country. He's done a lot of Cajun, uh, really big fiddler, been on lots of different albums. So Doug Kershaw continued to make great music, uh, but not Rusty. So it was just a compilation album, something different out there, something super cheap. But I saw them faces and go, God, let's just see what that's up with that. Go. 
my head did not blow up, so that's, I don't know, you might be disappointed. You probably waited this whole time. Head going to blow, head going to blow. Didn't happen. Sorry about that. Uh, but as always, I appreciate you tuning in. New subscribers, thank you so much for uh, joining in on that, uh, joining the channel and watching. Please leave the comments. I, I always enjoy that. I guess thumbs up is a good thing. I know thumbs down is bad. Don't do that. Eh, if you feel you need to, you got to do what you got to do. Uh, but thanks, everybody, for joining in with me this week. Uh, enjoy your week. Have a great one. I think I'm going to go take a nap now. All right? Thanks, everybody. Bye.